Welcome to chapter nine. This is the first chapter on what's called conservation laws, mainly conservation of energy, linear momentum, and then when we talk, when we get to chapter 12, we'll talk about angular momentum also. Okay. So chapter nine is about work and kinetic energy. And so we will learn about energy and how it's transferred and uh, uh, transformed. So you get potential energy, kinetic energy, and uh, different forms uh, of energy. So let's look at the details of this chapter. So our learning outcomes for chapter nine uh, will be to represent the work done by any force. So how do we find the work done by any force? represented as well as evaluated. It will be um, an integral. It will be an integration problem. We will calculate the kinetic energy of a particle given its mass and its velocity or momentum. But we'll talk about uh, the momentum part when we discuss chapter, 10, uh, chapter 11, which is linear momentum. So maybe this part here will be not taken out but will be delayed until two chapters when we talk about momentum. Should be able by the end of this chapter uh, to evaluate the kinetic energy of a body relative to different frames of reference. So you need to know first about kinetic energy and then how to calculate it. We will also be able to apply the work energy theorem to find information about the motion of a particle given the forces acting on it. should be able to also use the work energy theorem to find information about the forces acting on a particle given information about its motion. Okay. We will talk about what are called conservative, non-conservative forces in the next chapter, chapter 10. You will relate the work done during a time interval to the power delivered. Okay. We'll talk about power and its meaning. And then you should also be able to find the power expanded by a force acting on a moving body. So how much power is dissipated by a force? How much power is produced by a particular force? And how do we calculate it? So that's chapter nine.